Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast. GIPCO XPSF Expression System, one chemically defined platform for high-level expression of proteins from insect cells. Presented by Maya Yavcheva, an R&D scientist from Thermo Fisher Scientific. I'm Dr. Susie Valdez of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We're delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Thermo Fisher Scientific. For more information about our sponsor, visit www.thermofisher.com. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, type the questions into the drop-down box that appear on the screen, and we'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. If you have any trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, just click on the Ask a Question box and let them know you're having a problem. Please join me now in welcoming our presenter, Maya Yavcheva. I will now turn the presentation over to her. Welcome, Maya. Thank you, Susan. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I have the pleasure to introduce to you the newest member of the XP, GIPCO's XP family of expression platforms, the XPSF expression system, uh, which is the very first chemically defined uh, insect cell baclovirus based insect expression system that can generate up to three times more protein compared to the existing uh, insect pl expression platforms. The XPSF expression system enables greater consistency across multiple um, expression runs, all in less time due to the improved bacterial virus generation step. Um, for the rest of my presentation, uh, I'm going to start with a very brief overview of why, what are some of the advantages of uh, using insect cell expression system, um, and then I'm going to go over in more details on the XPSF system, going through each of the individual components, as well as showing you some data around the performance of the complete system, uh, as well as few uh, case studies and a specific model proteins that we have expressed in this system. Insect cell expression system um, has been around for about 30 years now, uh, or maybe even a little more. Uh, and it's been a suitable platform for expression of multimeric proteins, virus-like particles, so, um, sometimes proteins that are simply toxic to mammalian cells. Uh, and the recent years uh, have gained a, a lot of popularity around, around the expression of uh, AAV as well. Uh, Baclovirus-based technologies enable a large DNA payload to be transferred to the cells, which makes them a favorable platform for those large proteins. Uh, the proteins expressed in insect cells typically have um, simpler, more homogeneous phosphorylational modifications compared to the mammalian cells, uh, which makes them a favorable uh, proteins for use in structural and functional studies. Uh, the insect cell platform generally has a lower cost and equipment requirements compared to the mammalian system. Uh, and last but not the least, the, this platform has been uh, really popular the last couple of uh, years by being an established platform for vaccines and virus therapeuticals. Um, here I have a few of the latest additions to the market that have been made in insect cells, um, with one of the latest being added a few years ago. It's the full walk, the seasonal flu vaccines made by uh, Protein Sciences Corporation, now part of Sanofi. But with all of those advantages, insect cell platforms do have some challenges associated with them um, and some uh, disadvantages that people need to overcome when using the systems. Uh, one of the biggest disadvantages being the presence of East lead and other undefined components still in the media that have created a lot of lots of lot variability, which together with the generally lower yields coming from the um, insect cell protein expression systems uh, and the time that it requires for the generation of bacterial virus sometimes makes this platform a little more tedious to work with um, and require more time and uh, the results might not be that uh, satisfactory. What we try to achieve here, we took a system-based approach uh, in which we began with the development of fully chemically defined media. So this was our heart of the system. 
remo by removing East Blade and removing any other undefined components, we were able to achieve great consistency run to run. Um, together with the chemically defined media, we added uh, SF9 cells that are adapted in the chemically defined media and can grow to high densities. We also added a protein expression enhancer that is a critical component in the protein expression step and allows for uh, protein expression boost and, and achieving uh, at least three times higher protein tires. Uh, and the last addition as part of this system-based approach was the addition of a new and improved transfection reagent that allow us for shortening the time uh, from uh, long to protein expression. With all this, we were able to achieve more proteins, greater consistency in a shorter time. Um, here in the next slide, I have the, what, what is the XTSF system consisted of. Um, so we currently offer a starter kit that includes all of the components, uh, but some of those uh, components are going to be sold individually as well. Uh, as part of the starter kit, besides the XPSF CD medium, the XPSF 9 cells, the XPSF spectrum introspection reagent, and the XPSF enhancer, we also added the DH10 back cells and the PFAS back vector necessary to generate your virus using the back to back system, uh, as well as we added the Optimum media, which is used for complexation uh, during the back of the virus generation step. The next couple of slides, I'm going to go over each of the individual components and show you a little more details and data around the performance of each of them. I'm going to start with a chemically defined media. As I said, this is one of the biggest improvements of this system. Uh, the XPSF CD medium does not contain any yeast slate or other uh, kind of hydrolysate. It's an animal origin free, serum and protein free. Uh, it is a complete medium that does not require any supplementation. Uh, it's one medium that can be used from the beginning to the end, starting from cell growth through virus generation, going into protein expression. You don't need uh, different medias. And the greatest advantage of this media, besides the uh, consistency, is that the cells were able to achieve a really high uh, cell densities as of about 20 million, as you can see on the graph on the top right. A typical East Lake containing media can achieve about 12, at most 15 million in some cases, uh, while with the XPS FCD media, we consistently can get a peak cell density of about 20 million, uh, as well as we can get them consistently, as you can see on the bottom graph, um, we track the doubling times of, uh, across 15 passages uh, and compare them, the doubling times of the XPSF CD medium with three other uh, suppliers, East Street containing media, uh, and you can see the great consistency uh, and, and how each passage you can rely on your cells to be uh, where you expect them to be uh, compared to some of the fluctuation that can be seen in the other medias. With uh, continuing the consistency team, uh, we also compare multiple lots of this media. Uh, as you can see on the graph on the left, we have four different um, lots of media. Four different lots of media are showing a great consistency in growth kinetics um, as, as expected from uh, a chemically defined media that does not contain anything that, that should create lots of lot variability. Um, as well as we've seen a great consistency in regard to protein expression on the right, um, even after 12 months uh, from the manufacturing date. So this media is really stable um, for over 12 months uh, across multiple lots. Um, with this, I'm going to move to the cells. The XPSF cells are uh, derived from a GIPCO SF9 cell line that has been extensively adapted into the chemically de XPSF uh, chemically defined medium. Um, those cells are pre have pretty typical round morphology as, uh, as seen for all of the insect cell cell lines, uh, as you can see on the picture on the right. Uh, the, the typical diameter of those cells is between 16.5 and, and 17 microns. 
uh, when are, they are not infected. Of course, after infection, the diameters grow, uh, increase significantly, as I'll show this a little later in this presentation. The typical doubling times are about 24 hours, um, and, though, and again, those cells are, have been able to grow to really high densities of about 20 million, uh, which makes a, a, a key characteristic um, and key differentiation of those cells compared to some of the other uh, insect cell, uh, like cell lines in general is that very typical for those high density cultures, um, we don't recommend seeding them and passaging them uh, at too low of a density. So if you can see on the graph on the right, um, the typical kinetics, uh, growth kinetics of those cells, uh, they're in the early log phase somewhere between 5 and 10 million, uh, which is our recommendation for passaging those. A very critical um, recommendation is to not passage those cells before they reach 5 million. Um, otherwise, you might experience some lagging uh, and not the optimal performance of those cells. Uh, those cells have been very stable over 20 passages. You can see on both graphs in regard to growth on the right uh, and in regard to protein expression on the left, um, we see a very consistent profile. Uh, so with the cells, uh, I'm going to move to the protein to, to the transfection reagent. The XP Fectamin S Ceph transfection reagent uh, is an improved lipid-based transfection reagent that has allowed us to uh, improve the transfection protocol and deliver a convenient protocol uh, that has few uh, important characteristics and few improvements. Uh, the first one being around shorter complexation time. This transfection re reagent requires only five minutes uh, for efficient complexation. Uh, it does not require separate complexation of the DNA and the lipid. Uh, instead, it, those can be added directly in a single tube. Uh, and then the, one of the main advantages of this reagent is uh, the fact that it has a lower cytotoxicity, so it does not require any media changes post transfection. Uh, and we can also achieve higher tires in shorter time. Um, even though we do provide a, a adherent based protocol with this transfection reagent, as you can see on the top left uh, right graph, uh, we have a typical tire comparison between adherent and suspension. We strongly recommend and are exploring this is the newest uh, protocol that we have developed um, in a suspension-based format because it allows for uh, getting a larger volume of virus, a shorter time, and a better quality virus uh, that does not um, need for additional virus amplification, and it eliminates the need for additional virus amplification uh, which significantly can shorter your timelines. Um, we have uh, developed a different scales of the, the suspension protocol, so you can go anywhere between 4 ml up to 100 ml of P0 virus, depending on your needs uh, and requirements, uh, and get very consistent tires of about uh, 10 to the 9 infectious virus particles per ml. Uh, and then here I can actually show you the the great improvement by using the suspension. Uh, you can shorten your timelines with about half of the time. So with a classical protocol, going from a BACME DNA, uh, going through a P0 virus of about achieving at most about 3 ml, um, and then the need of at least one or two viral amplifications before you go to protein expression can take anywhere between 12 and 20 days. With the new and improved XPSF protocol, going from a BACME DNA, you can get up to 100 ml of P0 virus, uh, which can be directly used in, P0, in protein expression, uh, and that way you can save at least half of the time. And with the graph on the right, uh, we have compared the protein expression uh, with virus generated in the XPSF protocol uh, in the, or the red bar. Uh, as well as the viruses made, the P P1 and P2 viruses made in the classical protocol in the two um, blue bars, uh, and you can see that there is no difference in the protein tires. Um, even with P0, you can get uh, slightly better tires uh, from the P2 in the classical, um, since uh, with any further amplification, you're uh, introducing an additional level of passaging effect, uh, which might reduce the viral quality and uh, the 
gene, the protein expression further. Uh, and with the virus being made in a shorter time, uh, we can move on to the protein expression step where we added an, an additional uh, component that is critical for the ob obtaining uh, higher protein titers. The XPSF enhancer is a chemically defined proprietary formulation uh, protein booster, and which is, I think it's one of the unique uh, addition for the insect cell workflow. Not, not many um, suppliers do offer a similar component uh, to boost protein expression. The uh, critical step or the critical uh, key characteristic of this enhancer is that it needs to be added at a specific time to obtain um, maximal results. The, we have uh, identified that the optimal time for addition of the enhancer is 18 to 24 hours before infection. Because what the enhancer does, it stages the cells um, to get ready to efficiently uptake the bacterial virus um, and, and perform the infection optimally at those higher densities that we uh, have developed the protocol on. Since those cell, the XPSF9 cells can achieve higher density, we uh, took advantage of that and, and were able to perform the infection at a higher than typically done uh, densities. So the addition of the enhancer was critical for that. Uh, the enhancer is also optim optimized to work primarily with an XPSFCD medium. So it's uh, currently available as a production kit uh, together with the media. And on the graph on the left, you can see the overall improvement uh, in protein titers from compared to an, uh, an ex a classical expression in uh, SF9 cells, in SF902 media and SF9 cells. Um, where we can achieve about one, one and a half to two points uh, with the XPSF system without the enhancer, and we can get uh, three, three fold and above uh, when we add the enhancer and use the complete XPSF system. Uh, the graph on the right is showing uh, some, some time course uh, while we were optimizing the precise addition timing of the enhancer, and you can see that the 18 to 24 hours is truly giving you the best um, performance. If added early, if the virus is added earlier or later, uh, that might not um, be the optimal. Uh, with this, I'm going to move to wrapping up the system and uh, showing you the two main protocols. Just a, so this is a, just a brief overview of the how the protocols look like. Um, pretty straightforward. We haven't introduced too many additional steps or, or anything that complicates the workflow. Uh, the bacterial virus generation step has one addition, um, which is slightly different than what's typically done. Um, we found out that to get the best performance and the best tigers, the cells need to be um, put in a fresh medium. As far as uh, so we seed the cells at 2.5 million uh, in fresh media. Then we add the Optimum uh, and the XPSF9 uh, perfection reagent and um, back mid DNA complexation, um, five minute complexation. We add that to the culture, um, and then in about three to five days, uh, you can obtain a high tiger P0 virus um, that can be further used into protein expression. Uh, and then on the bottom is the protein expression step uh, in which we prepare the cells the day before infection. Uh, we see them at 5 million, add the enhancer right away. Uh, and then after 18 to 24 hours, uh, we add the back of the virus. Um, and then again, in about two to three, three to four days, depending on the specific proteins, uh, you can harvest your proteins uh, and do your further downstream analysis. Um, with this, I'm going to show what to look for in a typical XPSF uh, pr protein production step and infection. Um, in, after three days post infection, there are few um, parameters that are typically observed. Uh, we did, if if uh, infection has proceeded efficiently, um, we have seen typical viable cell densities of about 4 to 8 million. 
uh, viability uh, drops usually to about 60 to 80 percent, uh, and then cell diameter increased to 18 to 20 microns. And on the graph on the bottom, on the left, you can see the typical uh, a comparison between a traditional protocol in sex cell uh, kinetics, uh, in sex cell protein expression kinetics, uh, as well as the kinetics seen in the XPSS protocol. Uh, very comparable viability drop in between both systems, um, and, uh, and a comparable VCD drop. Um, and of course, the XPSS, XPSF system um, has showing a higher viable cell density which reflects on the right graph, which reflects to having more biomass and getting more protein in the same volume. Um, the next slide, I have an example of what to look for in an efficient um, infection. On the left, we have a healthy non-infected XPSF cells. There are, as I mentioned earlier, are typical round 17 microns in diameter cells, um, pretty healthy. No, no, we don't see uh, any significant clumping, maybe a little bit when those go to a really high density, but that does not affect uh, protein expression or uh, transfection. And on the right, you can see XPS of nine sex cells infected with GFP expressing back of the virus. Um, those samples were taken four days uh, post-infection. You can see a lot of dead cells at this point since this is a lytic system and the vacuole virus will ultimately uh, lyse the cells. But you can also see few enlarged cells on the bottom. On the left, the, the enlarged cells that correspond to the, the same cells expressing GFP uh, that have been efficiently infected. Those are some of the key characteristics to look for when using the XPSF system uh, and ensure that you have an optimal protein expression step. Um, the XPSF system um, has been optimized uh, to give you um, a flexibility and a certain level of scalability. Um, we so far have a protocols developed from 125 ml uh, shake flask to up to 2 liter shake flask, uh, and we are further working on optimizing the system into a higher scales um, and moving into eventually moving into bioreactors and wave scales. With the system, you can also go uh, scale down uh, for any any applications that might need screening of multiple clones or require less volume, uh, you can go in 24G PUEL plate and still use the XPSF system uh, and obtain comparable tires to a, a flask uh, scale that can be further um, transferred to a flask scale if needed, if the specific clone is what you want to scale up. Um, with this, uh, I'm concluding the individual steps. Uh, and I'm going to move to show you some data around the complete performance of the system. Uh, within an extensive comparison of the XPSF system uh, with five major uh, suppliers in six, uh, East Lake Media that are currently out on the market, uh, we did an extensive adaptation of SF9 cells in each of those medias uh, and then compare growth and protein expression for three uh, separate proteins. The top left graph shows the typical growth profiles. Um, as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, uh, any of the other medias can reach at most 10 to 12 millions in this case of peak cell density, while the XPSF uh, exhibits the typically seen characteristic of about 20 uh, million of peak cell density, which allows for the higher density uh, infection and protein production. On the bottom, we have compared three different proteins. Uh, we have a FC-fused protein as well as two intracellular. Uh, those three proteins represent different expression levels, as you can see from left to right. So the, with the first protein, we have up to one gram per liter, so very good expressing a protein. With the middle one, it's more of a moderate expressor. Uh, we get about 120 mix per liter. Uh, and then the last example uh, is another intercellular protein that is harder to express, uh, and we have been able to achieve about 60 mix per liter of that one in the XPSF system. Uh, but overall, you can see the average improvement from all those three proteins is anywhere between three and four and five folds uh, compared to the classical expression in any of those other media. 
So again, the XPSF system um, can provide, besides the consistency, can provide um, improved titers as well. Um, the next few slides, I'm going to move through a specific proteins that we have expressed in the system uh, and try to characterize uh, as well. The first example uh, is a secreted protein. We use a secreted alkaline phosphatase as a model. Uh, we express it in both the, XP, uh, the XPSF system as well as the SF900 tool uh, media using more of a, of a classical uh, lower density protein expression. Uh, we were able to purify the protein uh, using a histac purification, uh, and we did not see any differences in purity between the two proteins, uh, as well as uh, in regards to molecular weight, uh, the proteins were uh, absolutely on spot in both systems. We, we saw the same, um, uh, same quality uh, of a protein with the advantage of the XPSF system having more protein. And uh, we recently did uh, some glycan profiles, even though they, uh, they are not shown in those slides, but we've been able to see a pretty comparable glycosylation patterns uh, between the protein expressed in both systems as well. Uh, the next example, uh, we wanted to check the functionality of the proteins expressed in XPSF system. Uh, we use tumor necrosis factor alpha as the model here. Uh, we express it in both systems. We saw the expected improvement. We actually saw pretty good improvement with those pro that protein of about fourfold. Um, and then we, after purifying the protein, we use a TNF alpha activity uh, assay. It was measured by luciferase based NF kappa B activation uh, cell line. So we have a cell line engineered uh, to produce luciferase when a TNF alpha is added and it's activating the TNF kappa B uh, pathway. So after measuring the luciferase produced from those cells, we can compare um, whether we have a protein with equal functionality. And you can see on the graph, we have a great compar comparability between the SS900 to medium and the XPSF uh, produced uh, TNF alpha. Um, and the last example that I have uh, is a very interesting protein. So we recently expressed a um, 7-span G protein couple receptor, um, the cannabinoid receptor type 2, which was a great model for the expression of membrane proteins and, and a really hard to express protein. Uh, what we did, how we approached the expression of this protein, we actually first started with a time course um, since even though we generally recommend three to four days post-infection harvest time, for certain protein, um, you definitely need to uh, optimize that. Uh, in the case of a protein like CB2, we found out that 48 hours uh, is a better harvest time point, since at later time points, the viability of the cell drops significantly. And you can see in the, the bottom graph, bottom middle graph, the, at 56 hours, we have less than 60% viability, um, which is starting to reflect, if you look in the graph on the left, on the, the quality and the, the molecules um, per cell of the CB2. So uh, after we optimize that, we compare again the number of molecules of CB2 per cell that we're getting uh, from XPSF system as well as the SF9. Um, and when we compare the total molecules we're getting uh, from both systems, we were able to see about tenfold improvement uh, in regard to total protein. Uh, and we are further working with a collaborator to purify and understand more about the performance of this protein uh, from both systems. Um, with all this, um, I would want to say a big thank you to the entire team who has devoted their time uh, on this project. Uh, we had a pretty extensive team working on this. Um, it's not an easy thing to, to get to the market. Uh, and um, there are a few people in R&D that have been tirelessly working on that, Sarah Burns, Ken Thompson, Melissa Cross, Katie Irvine, um, as well as our business support um, and Natasha Lucky, Henry Chu, and Brick Passy, um, and of course, last but not the least, John Smuda is our R&D director, has always 
uh, lead us uh, and help us go through um, everything like this. So thank you very much for the attention, and I'm happy to answer any question that I might have come through my talk. Thank you, Maya, for that informative presentation. And we will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on that Ask a Question drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window, type your questions into the box that appear on the screen, and click that Send button. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. So let's take a look at our audience member questions coming in already. Our first question, Maya, is what are the normal growth characteristics of X XBSF9 cells? Um, thank you, Susan. Great question. Um, so as I show uh, a little early, uh, so for, those, for the XPS of nine cells, we recommend uh, a, a passaging schedule of three or four days uh, in which when cells are seeded at either 0.5 or 1 million, um, they should reach uh, about, uh, above 5 million um, at the time of passaging. So if cells are, are seeded at 0.5, after four days, they're going to be over 5 million. Uh, if cells are passaged at 1, they're going to be over uh, 5 million in three days. Um, so this is, this is what, what to look for. Um, if, if anything outside of that, if cells are lagging. Um, so actually, just to add on this, the first one or two passages, you might see a little bit of different um, schedule uh, until the cells are recovering from the tau. Uh, but past passage two, you should be seeing very consistent uh, kinetics like this. Thank you for that. Our next question is, did you observe any differences in the quality of virus production between regular SF9 cells and XPSF? We have not, so I don't have the data here to show as part of the slide deck, uh, but we have compared virus made uh, in SF900 to an SF9 cells uh, versus using the new transfection reagents. Um, actually, to some extent, the graph that I have here um, shows that that when, when we, we use the virus the, for, from P0 uh, in XPSF system, um, versus the P1 or P2 virus from the classical system, we don't observe any uh, issues with quality and for protein expression. And thank you, Maya. And how did you measure your virus leaders? Uh, that's a great Go question. Ahead. So we, we have actually, uh, as part of the system, we're introducing a new uh, virus titration method uh, based on flow cytometry. Uh, which is a very quick and a very precise method to measure functional particles, baccalovirus particles, uh, that takes only a, a, a day uh, where the cells are, we seed cells uh, in a 24 deep well format. Uh, we the, prepare a serial dilution of the virus to be tighter, infect the cells for about 16 hours, uh, and then the next day we stain the cells with an anti-GP64, which is a baculovirus surface protein that gets displayed on the cells, um, and we measure the percent positive cells, and then based on that we calculate the tires. Wonderful, thank you. And can we do transient transfection using explicit cumine enhances and, and feed instead of back to back? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question very well, to be honest. Uh, you said feed? Can, can you repeat the question, maybe? Yes, sorry about that. Can we do transient transfection using ex, um, <clears throat> excuse me, expectamine enhancers and feed instead of back to back. So there's not a, as part of the XPS system we don't have a feed. Uh the back to back is actually used for the baculovirus step. So we still use a back back to back uh, yeah I'm not sure about that question to be honest. <clears throat> thank you. And, and I want to thank our audience members for their questions coming in. Um, our next question is, 
how important is it to code and optimize the gene for expression in insect cells? And it's a two-part question. How well would a gene optimized for E. coli or HEC express in this system? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. This is one thing we haven't tested um, side by side. Uh, I mean, I, I, we've seen in the literature that there are some data um, showing the benefits of cotton optimization. Um, we have actually expressed a couple of proteins uh, that are typically expressed in um, mammalian or E. coli system and have seen a good expression. But again, we have not compared side by side. That's a, probably a good thing to test in the future. When you compare different media, you adapted your XB cells to individual media? Yes. Okay. And have you tried to purify GPCRs for crystallization? Uh, so this is one thing that we're working with collaborator on currently. Um, he, he is so the, our collaborator provided us with the CB2 sequence, um, and we expressed the protein for him, and he's currently working on trying to purify it. So we don't have the data yet, but it's hopefully coming soon. Thank you, Maya, and thank you again for our audience. We have wonderful questions coming in. Do the cells lice later than normal in SF9 cells? Uh, do the cells what? Sorry. Do this. I'm sorry. I just moved it. Do the cells um, lice later than normal SF9 uh, cells? We have not seen that. Uh, we we have seen a pretty pretty comparable kinetics and and lysing rate between the two systems. Thank you. And what is the amount of baculovirus you use for protein expression? We recommend using. Uh, MOI5, meaning uh, five viral particles per cell, to get a, an optimal uh, expression at those higher densities. And thank you, Maya. And how confident are you with your new system that PO virus is as is good enough for protein production? How many examples have you had of different viruses? Um, it, I, unfortunately, it does not. Um, the the member did not. Yeah, uh, ask we that have piece. Expressed, at this point in the system, we have generated viruses for uh, between somewhere between five and ten different proteins, um, and we have seen a good consistency uh, in performance between, across all of those proteins. Thank you. And what are what are the best practices for handling XBSF9 cells? Um, great question. So the best practices, as I mentioned earlier, since those cells are um, a, a, a high-density cell line, uh, we don't recommend uh, in feeding and passaging those cells before they got into their uh, optimal early log phase of about 5 to 10 million. Um, it's very important. Uh, and then as a general recommendation, we rec when handling the cells, we recommend a gentle swirling to mix the cells. Uh, we don't recommend a vigorous mixing or pipetting um, to ensure the, that you have the best cells for, uh, with optimal performance. And do I really need to teeter my baculovirus? We do recommend, so we strongly recommend tiring the virus to ensure that you're getting a consistent result every time. Uh, because as a biological system, of course, sometimes, um, even though we, we have seen very consistent baculovirus production, baculovirus titers uh, from transfection to transfection, we still recommend tiring, and that's why we introduce a newer, uh, faster protein tiring, uh, baculovirus tiring methods to, to help with with that. Thank you, Maya. And you know what, we have time for a few more questions, and I just want to remind our audience members that any questions not answered today will be answered via email. Our next question from our audience is, how can I tell if my cells have been efficient, efficiently infected with a virus? 
Um, that's a great question. So I did show this a little earlier. So here is the typical kinetic. So the few of the characteristics we look for uh, to ensure that the cells are infected optimally are the viability drop of 16 to 18 percent. Of course, that that can vary slightly between different protein classes of proteins, but generally with different proteins that we have expressed, we've seen that range of a 16 to 80 percent at day three, uh, as well as the cell diameter increase is very important uh, to note as well, uh, since the the virus infect the cells and cells get swollen and start producing more protein, um, cell diameter is expected to increase. That's another good indication as well. <clears throat> Thank you for that. Could there be a bigger problem of um, proteases due to high cellar, I'm sorry, higher cell numbers with XB vectamine SF cells upon purification of protein? Uh, that's a great question. We usually recommend adding a protease inhibitor. Uh, we have not seen any indication that there's going to be a problem. So we did purify, we did compare purification comparison uh, from pro protein expressed in the X, uh, SF900 to lower density uh, in comparison with the XPSF, as I show with the uh, case of secreted alkaline phosphatase, and we did not see any additional degradation or uh, increased proteic activity. But again, we, we do re recommend oh. using a protein inhibitor uh, as well to eliminate the, those issues. Thank you. And Maya, do you see increased protein expression when you use the XBSF CD medium with SF9 cells? Um, no, we have not compared it in that particular way. Um, we, we, uh, no, I mean, I yeah, I honestly can't can answer that because we haven't compared it in that way. But XPSF9 cells are derived from uh, SF9 cells. Thank you. And do you consistently get one times ten nine titers for PO virus? Uh, yes. Yeah, we, using the suspension protocol. If you use the adherence, it might be um, more into the five, ten to the eight range, but with using the suspension protocol, we consistently see over 1E9 and P0. We have one more question coming in. Do you have any fluorescent marker fused into DH10 box cells to monitor virus production? No, we do not. We have not done any improvements on the DH10 back and the PFAS back part yet. Thank you. Actually, we have one more. How can I ensure that my cells are growing optimally? Uh, so as a, as a quick check, we recommend doing a performing uh, a growth curve and seeding the cells at uh, 0.5 million uh, and then either checking the viability and the viable cell density every day or at least at checking at day five, six, and seven uh, where the cells would at about day six uh, cells should reach 18 to 20 million, and that's going to ensure that um, they're growing, they're, they're showing that uh, typical kinetic the profile that we see in those cells. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, Maya. And thank you to our audience members. The questions continue to come in, and we will continue. We have one more question that's just come in. Could you okay. use the XBSFCD media with old SF9 cells, and that's a two-part question, so could we just buy the media and not new cells? So you probably can, but it's probably going to it's going to be associated with uh, some level of adaptation as we've seen with any cell type um, and switching to a new media, you need to do a certain level of adaptation to make sure the cells are adapted to the particular media and can perform and give you an optimal um, the, Results, even though we don't guarantee, I mean, with, it, without using the, the complete XP system, we don't guarantee that you're going to achieve those highest titers um, that we are showing here. Thank you for that. Can the cells 
be counted with the Countess automatic cell counter? Uh, we have not used counters, but we are using a Vicel automated uh, virus counter, so I believe counters will be also appropriate uh, methods to use. Maya, thank you for your presentation today, and wow, what a great live participation from our audience. Would you like to provide them with any closing remarks before we close today? Uh, yeah, I mean, thank you very much for all the questions. That was definitely a great question uh, Q&A session. Um, and uh, as, as you mentioned, any, any further questions can be answered through an email. So if you think of anything else, feel free to reach. Thank you, Maya, and thank you for your important research. I'd also like to thank Thermo Fisher Scientific for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to remind everyone that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through May of 2019. Please share with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Also, stay tuned for our next presentation, Optimizing G-Protein Coupled Receptor Expression in Mammalian Cells, presented by Dr. Dean Stoss, a postdoctoral researcher from Duke University, and Dr. Laura Wingler, also a postdoctoral researcher from Duke University. You won't want to miss it. That's all for now, and thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Goodbye, and have a great day.